Hey guys, this is Nick and welcome to my Linux experiment. And about a month ago I bought a new desktop. It replaced my old Ryzen 5 2600 based desktop and it comes from Slimbook. It is super powerful, it is super slick, it looks beautiful and it is really just a nice improvement all over. So it's time we took a look at how I bought it, what was the experience of using it, the performance and all that stuff. Let's begin. Just a small disclaimer, this video is not sponsored by Slimbook, they didn't send me the computer for free or gift it to me, I bought it, I had to pay for it, and I didn't submit this video review to them before publishing it. That's it. Now, the Slimbook Chimera is Slimbook's desktop. It comes either with regular cooling or with water cooling, but I went with a regular cooling system because I know nothing about water cooling and wouldn't have been able to service the desktop myself if need be. I went with a Ryzen 7 5800X mounted on an Aorus 570X Pro motherboard. The graphics card is an Nvidia RTX 3070 and it has 32GB of DDR4 RAM. I also installed my own 2TB M.2 NVMe SSD inside. Now this is a big step up from the Ryzen 5 2600 and RTX 2060 combo I used previously. Now the case itself is something you might find in other shops, but it's personalized nicely with a laser-etched Slimbook logo. You can also ask for your own stuff to be etched onto the surface. In my case, it's my logo. Looks pretty good if you ask me, but I might be biased. The Slimbook actually asked me where I wanted to place the logo, which size I wanted to make it, and they sent me preview pictures to ensure that it all looked like I wanted. Now, top-notch service here. The case is made out of aluminium for the front and the top, and the sides are both removable glass panels held by four thumb screws. I must say I really love the look of this case. It's got an old Mac Pro vibe but in a smaller form factor and a bit more modern. The glass panels let you see the internals as they run and since the Slimbook team did a good job with cable management and assembly, it all looks pretty nice and tidy. It's super easy to open with just four thumb screws to remove the glass panel and everything is nicely accessible. Now I also wanted to minimize the amount of RGB LEDs present inside of the case. I didn't want my computer to light up like a Christmas tree. I'm not a big fan of that gaudy gamer super colorful look. But they couldn't provide me with a graphics card that didn't light up or with RAM that didn't light up. I was expecting to disable it afterwards, but in the end it used. It's pretty slim, it's not that many lights and honestly it doesn't look too bad. There's also a slim beam of light just coming out from the bottom of the case, which looks pretty good, at least you know if it's turned on or not. I mean, why not? Now the sides also serve as air intake, with two big fans pulling air in from the front. Now the I.O. on the case itself is pretty good as well, with two USB 3 ports on the side, easily accessible, a headphone jack, the microphone jack, and the reset button. The power button is on the top, next to a smaller one letting you control the LED color for the bottom lighting. All the hardware is perfectly supported under Manjaro and under Elementor iOS 6 as well, which means that anything based on Ubuntu 20.04 LTS or higher should be able to use that kind of hardware. Now, I guess that was to be expected since Slimbook only sells devices that are supposed to run with Linux, so everything should work fine here. Now let's move on to performance. Now I ran a few benchmarks on Manjaro KDE on my new desktop and on Manjaro GNOME on the old desktop just to compare the performance between the two. So running Geekbench 5 yielded a score of 1138 for single core and 7990 for multi-core, compared to 1068 in single core for my older Ryzen 5 2600 desktop and 5796 in multi-core. Now my new Slimbo Chimera gives me an almost 40% improvement in terms of multi-core performance. The single core performance is almost the same, which is to be expected as the clock speed is basically identical between the two processors, slightly higher in the new Ryzen CPU I'm using on the Chimera. Now for the graphics part, running Unigine Heaven at the extreme preset on my ultra-wide display at the native resolution of 3440 by 1440 it got an average of 66.5 FPS with a score of 1675. The highest FPS it got was 119 and the lowest was 8.7, probably when loading the initial scene. My previous desktop using an RTX 2060 and the Ryzen 5 2600 at the same presets but on the 16x9 1440p monitor at its native resolution got 52.8 FPS with a score of 1330. Now that's a 25% improvement here and keep in mind that the older desktop was running the benchmark on a lower resolution because it's not on an ultra-wide display so it has less pixels to push. So basically it's an impressive margin already. 
But enough about those artificial benchmarks, now let's take a look at how it can run games. Running Shadow of the Tomb Raider at max settings on the native resolution for my ultra-wide display, the Chimera got 96 FPS on average, rarely dipping below 90 even in the busiest scenes. My older desktop, on the same presets, and on the 16x9 1440p display, got 63 FPS on average, which is 52% lower than the Chimera, and on a lower total resolution as well. That's still more than 50% better performance on the Chimera. Running the Total War Warhammer 2 benchmark with everything cranked up to the max on the native resolution on my ultra-wide display, the Chimera got 72.6 FPS on average, with an 86 high and a 61 FPS low. This computer can run this game at a nice 60 FPS, without any issues, at max settings. Of course, it's not an extremely demanding game, but it's still pretty CPU heavy, so it's a very nice score. My previous desktop, at the same settings, and on the 16x9 1440p display, could only reach 19.3 FPS on average, which is barely playable at all. Framerate got no higher than 22 and dipped all the way to 16 FPS. On this game, it makes a huge difference, as battles are way more enjoyable when zoomed up close, and at lower details, the game shows its age. That amounts to a 62% increase in performance on the Chimera. Now to finish, on the older desktop, the Dawn of War 3 benchmark, with everything turned up to the max, could only reach 49.8 FPS on average, with a lowest point of 7 and a high of 80. It's definitely playable, but not super smooth. On the Chimera, on the ultra-wide display, at native resolution and max details, I got 93.55 on average, with a minimum of 74.26 FPS and a maximum of 139. This is an enormous difference of 87% in favor of the Chimera, and again, while driving a higher resolution. Okay, so the performance gain is really huge. Depending on the game, it goes from 50% to 87% better FPS. That's just an amazing difference, and of course it was going to be more powerful, it has a way better CPU, a way better GPU, and faster RAM, so obviously it was going to be higher. But still, the performance difference is enough that I can use every game at max settings, at least every game that I play, at max settings on my ultra-wide display, at the maximum resolution, and still be able to take advantage of that 100Hz refresh rate from the display, which is exactly what I wanted. So there were still some issues with the desktop, specifically one issue. When I got it, I think the Slimbook team might have been a little bit over-enthusiastic with the overclocking. Running it in day-to-day -day operations was fine, but as soon as I jumped into a game of Total War Warhammer 2, it played for about 10 minutes and then completely froze and broke the computer entirely. The computer was frozen, nothing was responsive, and it ended up rebooting. But CPU temps pretty high, at 17 degrees Celsius, even at idle. So it was definitely something about the voltage and the CPU overclock. Fortunately, a complete reset of the BIOS parameters solved the issue entirely, and the Slimbook team had been very helpful trying to helped me narrow down the issue, even on Twitter and even on the weekend, which was pretty amazing, so props to these guys. Now apart from that, I literally have no issue with the case or the desktop itself. It's really well assembled, the performance is amazing, the case looks good. The only problem that you might run into is that the reset button is super close to the headphone jack and the USB ports, so maybe if you fumble a little bit, you might be able to press the reset button instead of plugging in something, but it never happened to me in more than a month of use, so I don't think that's really an issue. Now to conclude, this new Slimbo Chimera is my new workstation for my day job, for which it is definitely overkill for when I'm working from home, but it's also my main workstation for running the channel. It's used to record videos, to edit them, to export them, and also to game. And for those tasks, the improvements are really noticeable. Even using DaVinci Resolve, Nets results for exporting a 1440p videos in the single digits in terms of minutes of export rendering time. On the older desktop, it was definitely around 15 to 16, so there's basically a 50 to 60% improvement in terms of the speed of video rendering, which makes making 1440p 60fps videos a lot more manageable because you don't lose as much time, and the computer is much more reactive while editing all of that. Now the gaming experience is also super smooth, and it lets me enjoy my full resolution of my ultra-wide display with 100Hz refresh rate, so I can cap it at 100fps with VSync, it's just an amazing experience, it's all I wanted from my computer, basically. Now, you can probably assemble the same PC with similar specs or better specs for the same price, 
if you want to do it yourself, but I have literally zero interest in building my own computer. I don't really know much about it and that's not something I want to expend time on, so I was very happy to have it pre-built for me. You can configure the same build on Slimbox website or any other one if you prefer. They've got Intel CPUs, AMD CPUs, water cooling, AMD GPUs, Nvidia GPUs. Whatever you want, you can assemble your own desktop there and I'm pretty sure that if you ask, they'll engrave something for you as well. So to conclude, I am super happy with the desktop. The Slimbook team has been excellent in helping me pick the parts and help me support when they went a little bit too overboard with the overclocking before sending it over. And basically, that's it. Super happy about the desktop. It's gonna be my main workstation for the next three to five years. Probably won't need to upgrade much to let it run that long. And that's about it for this video. I hope you guys enjoyed. If you did, don't stay to like or dislike if you didn't. You can also subscribe and turn on notifications. And if you'd prefer watching somewhere else, I'm also on Odyssey. I left a link in the description below. Now, if you really want to help support the channel, you can join my amazing Patreon subscribers and YouTube members and get access to a weekly Patreon cast and the right to vote on the next topics I'll cover. Now, thank you guys for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Bye!